Did you know that your yard is actually bigger than you think it is? It's because you have too much crap. In this video, we're gonna show you how to organize a little better, put away all the stuff that's important, get rid of the stuff that's not, because that leaves room for more non-crap, which, which will probably end up being crap, but it, it, just watch the video. All right guys, I wanna let you guys know that Aaron's been working super hard behind the scenes to make a calendar for you guys. We've got 13 of our projects that were finished and on the road, and we're so excited to show you guys this calendar. Um, they're available on our website. If you are a paid annual member, either as an enthusiast or as a builder, we're gonna send these calendars to you pro bono, but we need to verify your shipping address. So look in your email, make sure that you respond to that with the proper shipping address. So that's one of the perks along with getting discounts to all of the companies that we work with. The membership is likely less than the discount that you're going to save on buying big parts, say exhaust or go fast parts, whatever it is. But I'm proud of every one of these. I'm happy that we're driving them, that we're enjoying them. And we'll be doing this as an annual thing, all the projects that we finished up. So check that out. Check out all the other merch available on the website. Help support us and, and make great Christmas presents at the same time. Here we go. So today I get my Christmas present just a couple weeks early. Um, I get a 53 foot box trailer, I think. Got no landing gear, no axles on it. I just gotta get it home. Um, I'm excited, the trailer will be fantastic. We're getting all that crap out of the shop that needs to be out of the weather, but not necessarily be kept warm. Stuff like the convertible, the forklift, and the lawnmower can all go in there. sacrifice a couple holes in the trailer just so we can stick a chain around the I-beam underneath and a floor just going this way and then that will go to the tongue on the dolly and keep it from moving. on an open trailer, a bad idea. So this is kind of the mess behind my shop. I've got an old trailer top just used for some storage. I never really finished putting that together because I knew that that was temporary. Um, but I need uh, I need some space to store some of my vehicles and stuff outside uh, while we don't drive them for the winter. So we're gonna clean all this area up and put a couple seat containers there. We got some trusses. We're gonna go put a roof over top and build that just so we can kind of expand outside. So we're gonna try and move this with any skid steer over onto the far side into the bush a little bit, cover it up. It'll be surrounded by trees, so you can't really see it. This is a good spot for my construction tools and my lawnmower equipment and stuff like that. Um, I had my Tahoe frame here for, I don't know, when did I scrap the Tahoe? A long time ago. Because you never know when you might need a rusty Southern Ontario Tahoe frame. Put it over there, we're gonna hook up to the trailer, put that on the float trailer and bring that all the way to VNR. It's a good spot for them. Now that I have the low boy, I can move the bus. That bus has the engine, I took the engine out of that and put it into my Silverado. So we'll take those axles and put them underneath the roll off and then we'll scrap the rest of the bus. There is some stuff inside, um, which does work good for storage. Hopefully the tire, the brakes aren't all seized on it. That becomes a mess when I'm trying to move it and whatever else, but uh, we'll move that out. 
and then start uh, we'll just start mark working our way through bringing a bunch of loads away we got the cab for the f550 that can go back to Tuesley. a whole bunch of stuff that uh, I don't need anymore. I don't know why I'm keeping this garbage. I spent a lot of time putting a 4BT Cummins in this Tahoe and uh, I didn't have a lot of money back then, but if you're gonna spend time working on a project, make the effort to go down south and start with something clean and good and rust free. And off to the dump she goes, here we go. Okay, so I got this big giant mess here. None of those pipes, those all need to go not there. That hose was from the vacuum truck, if you remember that. We got an old 7.3 running and then we scrapped that. Um, Cause it was, it needed a bunch of injectors and stuff. I got beautiful topsoil here, which I'm gonna hold on to. But my property line actually goes quite a bit deeper. So what I did was I leveled a whole spot here with my good old little dad's Kubota. And uh, now I'm going to build it up with big stone. So I've got big four inch stone that I'm gonna lay down as like a pad. I'm gonna put the truck container or the truck box right here, close up the back and leave that for the lawnmower and probably the tractor, the lawnmower and my construction tools and stuff like that, but still make it so I can lock it. Beside that, I can park the truck and the trailer and the tank kind of under the trees. I can knock a few trees down and bring my whole parking lot over that way. And then actually my property line is that row of trees. And then I have a whole other row of trees here, but I can basically move this whole driveway back. So this is my temporary plan to uh, put a couple of vehicles inside there, keep working away. We are getting nicer and nicer vehicles and I kind of want to keep them inside. So the sea containers will help for a bit with the roof. And then eventually I'm going to put a shop nicely right along here. Um, probably a four door or five door um, little stable with uh, hoists in there so that we can put vehicles inside there um, as we build them, as we need storage. But still big enough that I can bring combines and transport trucks and everything else through that door. Yeah. So um, this is like the five year plan. If we're still doing YouTube or still around and we're still building, then we'll put up a shop. Otherwise, we'll move and get a bigger property. I don't know. But um, that pile of stones is behind the transfer truck trailer. So I need to move that. And then uh, I need to hook up to that anyway. And then uh, I can start moving some stones. And then I've got the screenings, a pile of screenings that can go over top of that and then that should keep everything from floating away. I got big giant concrete slabs and stuff underneath there, big giant concrete stones that are buried in there. I can't take any more of the topsoil off because all I do is hit roots. So um, yeah, plug it away. It'll look a whole lot different in a couple more days. Here we go. So we're gonna put the skid steer to use um, if it fires up. Does it still work, Andy? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of few, new, new, uh, new quirks to it, anti-theft things, but <laughs> good for anti-theft. <laughs> I got the trailer lifted up and uh, some beams underneath, some fence posts, but it won't roll on my own. So we'll see if this thing can lift it, push it, and then we'll have the forklift at the other end, lifting and pulling, and then we'll see if we can get it in the right spot and not kill any chickens in the process. Cause they've been <laughs> basically wherever I drive. Oh no. Okay, it's fine. Can you, can you go ahead? There you go. You don't need to lift it. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't need to lift it. <laughs> I'll push it anywhere where it wants to go. <laughs> so, that's where the chickens are laying their eggs. <laughs> side of the coop. Uh, yeah. You can keep those, Andy, if you want. Some could be like two days old. Some could be like six weeks old. Ooh. That's a game. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
good run. That's a good run. So you, you were plowing on the other side, right? So now let's see if we can pick up and go over the mud. Lower. Okay, still back. Oh, you're completely missing this one, though. Oh. I'll, I'll weld in a flat bar for you. I just... Should just put the leftover hardwood down on here and have it slide on this very edge on the hardwood. Yeah. And then, uh, and then both of us push, push it back. Yeah, push yeah, it yeah. back. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. Do a little bit at a time. I'd like to tuck it in as far as you can that way. Like try to get it rid of the tree? <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, so that's where we left it last night. And man, look at that. Look at all that space. That's awesome. So first we need to straighten that because she's a bit crooked, but that's not a big deal. We got to move the board, remove the boards from that end. And I'm think I'm sitting on one rock on the frame rail on the back here. So move that rock and um, uh, move those boards and that'll sit level. Then I can take everything from the bus that's sort of important still. There's a lot of crap in there that I don't need and that can stay. But that's going to go into storage into there. So parts that I, you know, things like uh, engine parts off of Cummins and ECUs and whatever else that can stay out of the weather um, and uh, aren't super crucial can go in there. Then I can take all the scrap, like the and old engine blocks and transmissions and stuff, they can go into the bus and then the bus can go to the scrapyard where I will get some money for it. And then I will use that money to buy sea containers. Then I can take 
my cars and put them in the seat container. So 240s, 220s. So it'll be the full length of my shop. And then the 220s on the far side, one will be for my construction stuff. The other stuff will be for the lawnmower stuff. And then I've got 240s to put four cars in. Um, and then I can still put tractor or whatever in that one, or maybe put that, that tractor in one of those other containers. I, I don't know. Probably that one, so I can still get in and out nice and easy. And then look at all this yard space. Then, so then I've got four cars in there. We got, we could put two cars in there. Um, so that's six. And then we got the, um, my cover trailer, yeah? So I could put one more in there over the winter. And then I also, once we put the roof in there, then we got the transfer truck and boat and everything covered too. So, um, yeah, it's coming together nicely. And I love running a tractor and skid steer and getting my forklift stuck and pulling them back out again. That was all of yesterday, just hopping from that into that. That can lift three times as much as that, but that can go places where that can't. So I'm pushing and pulling on the forklift. Hopefully it didn't wreck the transmission, trying to move that container. But uh, we are in good shape. And then we'll go through the container. And there's a bunch of shelving and stuff in there that fell over and some plywood. and Nothing that weighed anything. It's just... Now I'll put it where I feel like it should go. But uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so now I'm taking everything from inside the bus, putting it on skids, and then loading it into the trailer. And actually, this was everything that was in the trailer, just kind of tucked away or hanging up on the wall. And look at all the gobs of room we've got now. So uh, there's a cabinet on the inside of that bus that will still cover up most of this hole. I'm not gonna take time and frame that in. If uh, I need a little bit of light to see what's going on in here, just took the shelves over and then I got light again. I'm not gonna keep the mice out of this because there's holes in the floor uh, from when we brought it home and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, all of this is going to go in a seat container, but I don't have the seat container yet. So uh, leaving everything on skids will let me move it things in and out really fast. I'm gonna put the lawnmower in here. Um, but at the end of the day, this is not a huge concern right now. I just want to be able to make it so that I can move stuff around really fast. With forks on the tractor, I can get in and out and move stuff around super fast. So I'm just going to take everything from inside this bus and throw out what I don't need. Um, scrap, and there's, there's some stuff in here. So I'm going to move this all out that I still want to save, put on skids, put inside the trailer. Everything else can stay. I'm just going to go to the scrap here if I don't use it or need it. Here we go. Because the bus is basically empty, I left the shelves up, everything stayed on the shelves. It's three quarter inch plywood all along the wall so I can put a bunch of nails in there and hang up a bunch of stuff that uh, I forget I have, but if I walk back here all the time, I can look at it and go, oh yeah, before I go to VNR and make a brand new hose, I might see if I can just buy a fitting instead and make this hose work. Um, only two skids, that's uh, Silverado stuff, that's the piping stuff for my lawnmower. So uh, I gotta fix the hydrostat and stuff on that. That'll be this winter. We'll paint that up and clean that up. Um, that transmission's gotta go to MTH Fabrications, MT Fabrications. And then this is all my 48 Fleetmaster stuff ready to go. So um, I still have room to park tractor or the forklift inside here, got lots of room. So that's nice. We'll use the leftover uh, hardwood um, from the uh, low boy and build a nice ramp so that I can get in here with the forklift and put some gravel underneath that. Um, but 
I gotta tell you, it feels so good to purge. Just get rid of it. Just, if you haven't used it in, in five years, you're not going to, like, get rid of it. It's nice just seeing, remembering kind of what inventory you have, just for when you actually do need it. Um, and then just getting rid of all the stuff that you don't need. So, uh, we keep carrying on. We're gonna start filling the bus up with all the leftover scrap that's in the yard. And it's gonna look brand spanking new outside. I am very excited for this. This helps me sleep much better at night. So we're here at Elite Container Storage in Mississauga, and uh, this is a pretty cool place. It's just, it's just mind-boggling that you can stack these things so high. <laughs> but we're gonna go grab a couple. We're gonna grab two 20s and two 40s. We're gonna rent one 20 out over the winter. We're gonna grab the other 40s next week, and then we're gonna build the shelter so that we can uh, protect the K-Whopper and the boat real nice over the winter. So I'm excited to walk through. I think these guys are gonna let us put some GoPros on the machines and that, and that's pretty cool. Cause the other, that CN rail was pretty tight. <laughs> I got in trouble for not having my vest on right away. And uh, they're kind of sticklers. These guys are pretty cool. <laughs> so here we go, come on.
guys are going to have to go back into your comments and delete the ones about not chaining it down properly. We just made it in time before they closed and we had to chain her down on the street. So we're all good to go now. I think it's good. Okay, so I've graded one spot, that's level with my laser. Um, and just doing that rough, we're gonna see how this goes with uh, dumping it. I got the truck backed up here. I think we'll go to roughly, um, I'm not sure if I should pull the whole container off. Probably won't pull too bad. Or if I should tilt the trailer, lift a little bit off like and tie it to the tractor or something and then drive the trailer ahead I don't know what would be best but uh, yeah we'll try we'll try one I'm gonna unhook the tray the unstrap this back one we'll do just the back one and then I'll take the trusses that we got here um, and then we'll put those um, physically between the two and see where we end up because I need to be have a knee wall that goes on the inside of one container and the outside of the other. So naturally I'd want the longer run to go into the bush um, and keep it away from the shop. I can fill my cistern, but the cistern leaks, leaks into the bush, the overfill anyway. Um, but we've got to get rid of this water. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, Andy's here. Um, he's just working on the skid steer, getting rid of that oil filter, relocate. But uh, I think we can do it with the tractor and my forklift. So here we go. So I'm trying to back up nice and tight to my bathroom there. That's what I can see in my mirror. The sun is like directly in my eyes. I can't see, I can't see anything. <laughs> so I'm gonna inch, up, inch back uh, a couple feet at a time, but here we go. Okay. I'll bring it back. We'll swap toys in a bit. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I'm gonna dump this. I'll be fine. You go do your thing. Okay. I'll see if I can slide it up. Alright, so there's the one. Actually, they're a lot lighter than I thought they were, especially the 20s. The tractor can pick it up um, since I lost the skid steer. The forklift gets stuck in the loose fill, so this this will work okay. I'll get the truck out of the way, um, and then we'll laser the other section. I'll put down the truss where I want it to go, and then uh, put the other one down. I have to cut these two branches off because they're hanging right where I'm going to be. But I, I think I can probably go on, on an angle and then just put it in place with the tractor. It's no big deal. Let's see how we did. Okay, with that. And I am okay with that. Nice. Okay, so now I'll take the laser and make sure that the grade is the same height on the other side. And then I can scrape this down so this is actually higher. You can see that. Now I know the width, so I can scrape the middle down, give myself more height, keep the containers up a hair. Chickens, do you approve? No buggers. How are you not dead yet? You're like in the worst spots all the time. Oh, and we should see if the door is open properly. 
because that always means that it's sitting crooked. That's not magnetic. tools, lawnmower, weed eater, chainsaws, all lined up, all nice and dry, sealed, safe. Oh, can't wait. Cannot wait. Okay, so that's it for the night. Um, I actually have somewhere to be in five minutes and I'm not ready. I did just get my D battery so we can actually laser and unlike Ford uh, engineers who just kind of do it by eye, I'd like to put my laser on it and make sure that I'm within, you know, a quarter inch. But uh, looks good so far. I'm happy with that. Um, imagine another container there, a nice roof over there, transfer truck in between here, boat, transfer truck, something else. And then one, two, three, four, five, six sealed containers, spots for nice cars. Life is good. Here we go. Sea containers off at my place, loaded up with a bunch of tires. Those are all the old tires from the uh, from the Kenworth and from my low boy. Nice cleaning up the yard. We'll bring the trailer back. I'll grab the low boy. I'll try and grab the flatbed for the roll off, so at least I'm not driving home empty. And then, uh, yeah. I don't know when I'll get to that, but I got room for it now, so I might as well take it home. All right, so Elite Terminal Containers is exactly that. Terminal for containers. Used construction grade, mid-grade, which is what I got, or really nice one trip um, that you could uh, put some valuables in and not have an ugly eyesore if you're gonna put it in front of your house. So if you are looking to buy a container, definitely check out Elite. Great group of guys, really nice to work with, very laid back atmosphere, and uh, definitely I would buy from them again. Here we go.
so in Canada, we get frost down to about three feet. So that heaves all that ground, all of that ground expands. So things move and shift. So right now I just want to put the seat container somewhat level and then in the spring before we weld them together and put the trusses over top, we'll level them all 100%. But uh, we can use Phil's machine nicely to just go in between yet, lift them up one side or another, shim it up, but uh, this will work for now. So we're gonna move a couple more things and we'll back the trailer up to it. I think I'll tie a chain to the top of the container down to the right length, the full length of that container to the bottom of my container. And then as I pull away, I'm gonna tilt the trailer so that the, that container will essentially lift up the other container. And then I'll, I'll tilt the trailer so I'm only resting with the container on the front. I'll drive away and the chain will basically pull it tight to the other container. That was what I came up with on the way home from the transport truck drive. So it should work, it'll be fine. So definitely thank you Elite. Now I'm gonna have a hard time making this corner because I'm probably gonna have to keep the track tied to it to keep it from going to go this way because I gotta make that corner somehow. This will be interesting. So I'm feeling much, much better about my yard. Um, we got in it just in the nick before winter. This has been a process actually. It's been about a month that I've been working away at this in between stuff. But I managed to grab one more day of uh, not crappy roads where I could take the Kenworth out and go to um, Elite Shipping Containers and grab these two yet. So a long day of driving, got again an accident on the highway, took forever. But um, these two are where they're supposed to be. And then this one is in a little bit narrower. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, if you've seen us on Instagram, we were looking for two seven foot fans. I think we found them. So we're just gonna make a quick little wind tunnel for the Audi and have some fun with that before we take this and put it right up against the tree line. Um, I'm very, very excited about this. It makes me feel much better. It's much better uh, to put the cars inside here for multiple reasons. One, they're watertight and um, rodent tight. So um, we can put the vehicles inside and not worry about mice chewing them or whatever else. We don't want to drive them in the winter. And I want them out of the shop because, um, especially the nice paint job ones, because sparks are flying and, and this and that. And I hate the car covers in case they catch fire because they do a lot more damage. So um, we can put the vehicles out when we're not working on them. And expe yeah, especially the nice uh, painted ones. But uh, if, God forbid anything ever happens to anything inside the shop and the shop catches fire, at least these are protected. They're away from the shop for a little bit. Um, we're going to get rid of all those used tires yet and um, 
uh, then the cars inside will be protected until the fire department gets none of those and that one will ever get affected So I feel really good about that insurance likes that regardless guys get your vehicles appraised um, You need to have that for insurance. Don't do it after the fact. <laughs> That's what insurance is for guys So this area is still really messy. All these tires need to go to Tuesday. These are junk uh, We've got a couple carts the rolling carts that I just kind of toss out the door when I don't use them and then those are my two workbenches where I do a lot of my grinding and steel and all that um, so that my sparks end up here, but it's basically only in the summer. I will clean that up, just not right now. Um, I'm gonna weld hooks all on the side here. So I'm gonna have all my steel available to me outside. Um, most of the stuff I get from VNR anyway, so it's already rusty. So I just need the angle iron and the C channel and whatever for the odds and ends here and there. Um, we'll keep the aluminum inside so that uh, Vince will still talk to me. But in here, I have all my construction tools and my lawn stuff. So my lawnmower, which needs to have a hydrostat rebuilt. We'll do that this winter. You can see the oil leaking and a flat tire. Um, and then all of my construction stuff here. So I've got a tool or a cabinet behind Aaron there to put up yet. And then basically I need to weld a bunch of hooks on there so that I can hang stuff up. So it's not all piled on a bench. So I can sharpen my chains, do all my stuff in there. We've got a bench, we've got a bench grinder and um, uh, a vice so that uh, we can do everything for the lawn maintenance and all of that is where I need it to be. My tools for specifically that can stay in here. So when I cut the grass, I, I can uh, go away and um, leave everything. Also a good spot for fuel, um, a wave, from the shop uh, so the jerry cans um i think this container we're going to put around the corner here yet and keep the fuel out of the shop another safety thing those random sparks catching the uh um jerry cans on fire is never fun <laughs> okay so this one i got some spare parts um that can't get wet um i got the boat in here which just fits i got like two inches to spare and then some silverado stuff and this and that so we're good to leave that in here until I'm ready to tackle the boat. Um, I was hoping to get it in the water this year yet, but everything takes longer than you expect. And that's just the way it works. But the nice thing is, everything is easily lockable. Nobody gets in without making some noise. Hopefully the, the dog hears it and um, we can hear it from inside. And the plan is in the spring, once everything's settled, we level it. And then we put some trusses over top and then we got some nice covered um, storage for um, the transfer truck and that beautiful boat. You see that beautiful boat? Oh, it's not done yet, but um, video's coming out on that too. And then we'll get some electricity in here. We'll get some lights, all of that. So it's um, nice and easy to work on and see and all of that. We're gonna put some more spotlights on the shop so that we can see the yard better at night. I seem to be working in the dark a lot. It's winter time, but uh, but yeah, and then the Fargo and that can go in here too. So um, yeah, really really happy about all of this. How everything works out, everything's locked up nice and tight, put away for the winter, and that leaves more room in the shop and room for more toys. So here we go. So we got a few more vehicles to put inside, but this is by far the cheapest way for secure vehicle storage. Um, so uh, ch definitely check out Elite. They are fantastic people. I had a pile of fun there actually. Really nice atmosphere with the foosball and the Nerf guns and stuff like that. Super people. Um, I was a little bit fussy, a couple of the containers. I'm like, yeah, different ones. I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. So check them out. Tell them that you saw the video on the boss and uh, um, you never know. Uh, super happy with everything and uh, I, I, can, I can I can feel this calming and guys purge uh, I've been holding on to stuff for so many years just get rid of it if you haven't used it in three years you're probably not going to need it if it's small put it on a shelf somewhere if it's big just go see VNR and get paid um, remember guys if you're not filthy you're not rich get out there and work on it um, whether it's construction or storage or in the shop Nothing gets done unless you go out there and do it. Here we go.